John, how did you get on this morning? You've had a bit of a clutch problem, I believe, have you? Yeah, the, the clutch is slipping and um, it's a bit frustrating, but uh, you just want to get in, get your qualifying done and get it fixed for later on, really, yes. OK, now you're in the middle of a project here to climb mountains all over the world. How do you equate that to what you do in the TD? It's the same sort of stamina and endurance, I suppose, but... Really, it's a very expensive program to undertake, isn't it? Yeah, the, the mountains is um, really expensive now. Like I've spent sixty thousand already. I owe the bank quite a bit of that, and uh, it's going to cost a bit more. But um, I guess I guess it's, it's similar to motorcycling in the way that uh, it, it's a personal challenge, and that's what I like to do, really. What is it that drives you along to do that then? Because I haven't heard of many other people from the Isle of Man being keen on it. Um, well, I, I love long-distance sports, endurance sports. I, I, the TT is more for the excitement. It wouldn't. Uh, as well as the endurance side as well, I guess, for a six-lap race. But um, I like long-distance running, and mountaineering is just taking, I guess, long-distance events to the extreme. But it's a solitary thing. You need to be capable of coping completely on your own, and that's not uh, a thing that most people like, really. They prefer company. Um, I guess, well, on, on the mountain we do have a team, but in the end, certainly for Everest, it's you for yourself. If you want to go on, then you go on, or if you want to turn back. Um, so your fate is in your hands, so that is down to the individual on the mountains. You've got to really know how to cope in a variety of situations when you're doing that, and motorcycling as well. Once you're underway, virtually no one can help you if you get into difficulty. You've got to resolve the problem yourself. Yeah, certainly on the mountain, then, if you have problems after 26,000 feet, um, you've got a big problem then, because the only other oxygen systems there are other the people's and they're using them, so it's up to you to try and get down, I guess, about oxygen. So where are you with your programme of doing all these peaks around the world? I've done, um, I've done five now, five of the highest summits in each continent, two more to do. Uh, Australasia, which is Karstens Pyramid in uh, Indonesia, Jaya, and um, back to Everest again, which was aborted in 99. Some say that Everest isn't as hard as some of the others, uh, although it was, of course, the highest. And uh, people remember 1953 when it was finally conquered, but how does it compare? Because you've already had one go at that, haven't you? It, it is really hard. Believe me, people who say that uh, it's easy, Everest is easy and it's commercialised, it is not. It is the most, I'd say, the most hard and enduring uh, challenge you could have. And I've got to 26,000, just over 26,000 feet before it was stopped, our expedition. And I know it would be a real great strength and endurance to carry on from there. When will you go back to that? I hope for 2003, Jeff. That's what I'm looking forward to. And do you think you can conquer it? I do, yes. Um, I'm certainly streetwise now. Um, and I'm fitter. And I had, a, as it were, a 50-50 chance then before the mission was supported. Um, and I should be stronger. you just got to have the weather. If I have the weather, I'll be there. But it's not just climbing to the top of Everest, because the descent is equally as demanding. Yeah, a lot of people um, are lost on the way back, because you're spent by the time you get to the summit. And you've got to bear that in mind. And it is going to be um, quite a task to get back down again afterwards, when you are absolutely physically shattered. So the north face of Snaefell is not quite the same thing on the Honda, then? No, no not, not quite. No, it's uh, but, uh, a bit more exciting. Well, you're a great character and you give, bring credit, credit to the Isle of Man. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. OK, thanks a lot. OK. Yeah. Where up, where up, where was I? Yeah. 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 Yeah
The blonde. The blonde. The third one of the. Ah, the beach. One of the big yeah. Back here. <laughs> Deep chinner. Right, yeah. Slippery, Deep chinner. Slippery, surely, yeah. Chief, you boys down there in the mountain. Right. Uh, Slippery on the mountain. Yeah. Can you do a minute to a camera for us? Yeah, go ahead, Jeff, yeah. Well, Robert Dunlop, you've had a good morning, but the roads are a little bit slippery here and there, and uh, visibility a bit in and out, is it? Yeah, visibility wasn't too bad, actually, Jeff. We bet worse than the second lap there than it was the first lap. Pretty slippery over the mountain. It's a really big slide at the veranda. The first lap. <laughs> but that's just always the case. Thank you, God, you get me on. <laughs> it's always the case in the morning, so it doesn't look particularly damp, but that's it can right. be. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. the dampness comes out of the road. Yeah, it's actually caught a few lads out there. I see a few lads up off in the mountain there, so. Uh, Okay, but yeah. uh, running a bit better than Saturday night then? Yeah, bike's going well, yeah. Good. No problems, yeah. Because you lost the battery mounting, I think, didn't you, on Saturday yeah, night? Yeah, I did, yeah. We broke it. The, the weld broke on it, so... so a genuine you Honda weld, I must <laughs> Are you, You've been coming to the TD for a long time. You've got a pretty, pretty good, good record you, in the yeah. 125. Oh, not as long as me, but uh, <laughs> it's a great pleasure to see you back here. What is it that drives you around to keep on coming? It must be very expensive and demanding on time. Yeah, of course it is, but it's what I do, it's my life, so it's uh, just another race in the calendar for me, really. But the 125 is as much as you can manage, is it now? Yeah, I just, I, would, I know I would struggle with a bigger machine, especially around here, because it's quite physical anyway, so, I mean, I know my limitations, and uh, I think they, they stop at the 125. I'm marvelling when I look back at the <laughs> yeah. I'm marvelling when I look back at the records and see how well you rode the big uh, rotary Norton, I mean, that was a monster, wasn't it? Yeah, I missed those days, but... Can't turn the clock back, Jeff. But they were I flying, enjoyed, weren't they? Enjoyed it, yeah. yeah they I really did flying. enjoy the Norton, yeah. And the 250 as well. You also had a, a junior 250 win here, didn't you? As well as the 125s. Yeah, I had uh, had a good one on Ray Kyle's 250 Yamaha here in 1991. We played a collarbone, uh, and then I rode I rode a few 250s, but there's always something happened, you know. <laughs> so unfortunately, I only got the one, but. So do you think you can win the 125 this year? Do <laughs> you think you can That's win the 125? <laughs> yeah. 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 And that would be, what, six wins, I think, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. All right, but it's been a, a tough time for you recently. The Northwest didn't go too well because of the wet weather, wasn't it? Northwest side. You know, I just, uh, I didn't ride 100%. The lads put 100% on his bike and I didn't ride 100% and that. You know, I don't think that's fair, but it's just one of those days. <laughs> Okay, now you've probably had a lot of flack about this court case that you were involved in. I d I've personally taken your side on it, but is it spoil your preparation a little bit? I don't know why you should get some stick on it, but some have said so. Well, no, I mean, I was really the way I look at it, Jeff, is I was a worker, you know, working for an employee, you know, and, and unfortunately there was a component failure in the bike, it wasn't my fault, so. It's you know, really I, not much different to being in a factory and something. No, of course, and I mean, yeah. so, I mean, I know that Jack Valentine has been given off about, oh, this is going to ruin racing and insurance and stuff like that. But I mean, he, he of all people, should know that he should have insurance for the people who work for him, you know? So, yeah. Med had it, so. No reason why any other big team should, shouldn't have it, you know? Yeah. But away from that, then, you've got quite a, a concentrated effort here. At least it's the one bike, or do you have a backup machine in case it goes bang in a big way? Yeah, an engine. <laughs> Just an engine. Yeah. Uh, I remember one year you flew an engine in, didn't you? Yeah, uh, that was Joe, actually, yeah. Uh, when Joe you weren't able to ride, he took your motor, was it? Uh, no, no, it was another fellow's motor, actually, but... Uh, oh, Courtney, yeah, James uh, Courtney, James yeah. Courtney, yeah. yeah. So, we won that day, actually. Yeah. yeah. So you've had uh, plenty of action here in the Isle of Man from the long days ago when you were riding in the Manx Grand Prix. <laughs> been a bit of water under the bridge since then, Jeff. We've passed a bit of water since then, yeah, too. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for your time. Well, some, some more than others. Oh, indeed, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> thanks. All right, Jeff. And grab a stone here. There, I feel this fellow had a bloody duck or something. Oh, he's on his way back. He's on his way back. Thank you.